Welcome. This video uses Python to explain video or motion aliasing. A system that samples data digitally has a narrow window into the continuous time world we comfortably inhabit. When the digital system sampling rate fails to capture the continuous time events, something called aliasing can corrupt the signal. For example, the continuous time wheel on the left gradually increases speed, but the small wheel on the right, representing the image captured by the camera, appears to change speed and direction. This difference results from an interaction between the digital camera image capture rate, the frame rate, and the wheel rotation. This video has two sections. In the first section, I explain the causes of motion aliasing and provide examples of how it can appear in your footage. In the second section, I build the Python code used to create the illustrations in the first part of the video. Video cameras capture discrete images that computers replay quickly to give the appearance of motion. When object movement patterns match the camera frame rate, the replayed video motion differs from the physical object. Video aliasing often happens when filming rotating objects. For example, videos capturing spinning objects like balls, wheels, or propellers can have this problem. This first animation shows an example without aliasing. The wheel turns at 30 RPM, about half a hertz, and the camera has a 60 frame per second, or 60 hertz, capture rate. The wheel turns slightly in each camera frame so that the motion in the video appears to match the physical wheel when replayed. In this animation, the wheel speed matches the camera frame rate. Each exposure captures the wheel at the same angular location. This synchronization removes any sense of motion when the computer replays the video. This animation shows a different condition. The rotational speed of the wheel falls just below the camera frame rate. For this reason, each camera frame captures the wheel location a little earlier than the previous frame. As a result, when the computer replays the images, a rotation appears slow and opposite to the actual wheel. Finally, this animation shows the results when the wheel rotates a little faster than the camera frame rate. In this condition, each camera frame captures the wheel location a little later than the previous frame. As a result, the video shows the wheel rotating slowly, but in the same direction as the physical wheel. In this section of the video, we create the Python notebook I use to generate the video animations. We start by bringing in libraries to support the animation. I used Manum libraries to generate the video animations in this example. I've posted links to the library below. Next, we define the command line prompts for Manum. I used the save sections flag to break the animation up. This allows me to move and loop these independent pieces in the video editor. I also set the quality flag to QH to produce 1080 resolution at 60 frames per second. These lines set the width of the video. Next, we instantiate an animation object in a class. In the class definition, we explain to the computer what the scene should look like and define the wheel and camera characteristics. I used Adobe Illustrator to draw the scene to get scaling and proportion correct. In Illustrator, I use points instead of inches or centimeters to define the object sizes. For this reason, I have to define a scaling factor for the scene to convert from point to scene size. Now we define the wheel and camera feature sizes. I copied these dimensions over from the Illustrator object. Next, we define features derived from the wheel and camera dimensions. For example, we need to know the angle between the spokes. Now we're ready to create objects for our scene. First, define the wheel's outside diameter, or OD. Next, draw the rim inside diameter. I'm creating two animation objects. VG underscore wheel represents the continuous time or physical world wheel and VG underscore wheel underscore DT represents the discrete time wheel shown in the camera. These lines create the outside hub diameter and no automotive wheel would be complete without holes for the lug nuts. We have the rim, the outside diameter, and the hub. We need to connect those and we're gonna do that with spokes. With the wheel defined, we need to add the camera elements. These elements give us the body of the camera and that little LED telling us when the camera recording starts. Now that we have our elements defined, we can start to add these elements to a scene. These first lines of code add the continuous time wheel. Next, the code adds the camera. Finally, it draws the discrete time wheel. I've also included these lines here for section breaks. One of the things I like about Manim is that it allows you to build a continuous animation and break that continuous animation into smaller pieces, simplifying editing. The smaller pieces allow you to loop only a portion of your animation, break it out into a section, or add special effects. Now that we have the items in our scene, we're going to rotate them. Again, we use section breaks after we've rotated the items so that we can use the individual animation segments later to make the editing process a little less painful. In the previous section, you also saw an animation where the wheel speed changed, resulting in the camera aliasing. These last lines gradually change the continuous time and discrete time wheel speed to give that effect. There is a bit of showmanship here because the wheel speeds don't change at exactly the same rate. 
I do that because with the different rendering engines, I don't know exactly what the final frame rate will be. In other words, I can't be sure that I'll get exactly 60 frames per second when somebody views this video on a smartphone or tablet or a different device. Let's see if it'll build up our animation for us. This looks good. The progress bar shows the status for each animation frame. One of the things that's nice about the Jupyter interface is that the animation starts to play right away so you can see it run once it finishes. In this video we saw an example of motion aliasing and how the relationship between the object motion and the camera frame rate causes this effect. We also stepped through a Jupyter notebook and used the Manum library in Python to reproduce the animations. I've included links to the GitHub repository with the Jupyter Python code and a link to my website with a written description in the video links. I appreciate you watching and hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like the video and hit that subscribe button.